Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. At first, the Nigerian Secret Police, the SSS, on the morning of Friday, January 24th, 2014, stormed his house to effect an arrest. Then on Monday, January 27th, he showed up at the Abuja office of the SSS, accompanied by the River State Governor, Rotimi Amechi, and Senator Chris Ngige of Anambra State. He was detained for 15 hours. When he came out, he said that the interrogation was boring. We want to know why. Malam Erufai was the former minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, and currently the Deputy National Secretary of the Opposition or Progressive Congress, APC. Malam Rufai, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you, Rodolfo. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, let me start by asking you, this is not the first encounter, your first encounter with the SSS. What is different with this one? Uh, this, this is, uh, I think this is my third or fourth encounter, so I'm getting used to it. Uh, what is different uh, with this one was that they uh, stormed my houses twice. They went to one of my houses and tried to force themselves in. My security man wouldn't let them. And then they tried uh, the second house, uh, and uh, they couldn't get in. From that, it's just, it's just the usual routine. And yeah, and, and beyond the allegation, initial allegation of uh, making provocative statements, what did the SSS really say that you did that warranted your detention? Well, um, I made a statement at a conference that uh, we expect the 2015 elections to be free and fair, to be better organized than the travesty we saw in Anambra State and Delta State recently. And uh, I said that based on the parts of history, what happened in 1964, 1983, 1993, and 2011, if the elections are not free and fair, it's like through the violence. Uh, for the SSS, uh, that was a provocative statement, that was an incisive statement, and uh, that's why they sought to arrest. Uh, of course, I hold a completely different view. I believe that this speech is guaranteed under the Constitution, and there was nothing I said that was inciting in any way. It was simply predicting it's likely to happen based on what has happened in the past. What well, doesn't mean that, you know, that if elections are rigged, there is likelihood of uh, spontaneous negative reaction by those whose mandate has been stolen. And that reaction could turn violent. That's what I said. And I still maintain that. And I will say it next week and the week after. Mm. Uh, Malam, let me ask you. Um, so you were there for 15 hours. What were they asking you for 15 hours? Uh, well, the, the interrogation, as they call it, did not take more than a couple of hours. Uh, in two hours were done. Because it was a uh, very straightforward question. Uh, what was that what I said? Uh, I, you know, they wanted to know that I said what I was reported to have said, uh, and I said yes, I did. You know, I, 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 I believe strongly that when you have bad elections, you have violence. You know, it's not, uh, uh, it, 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 it's not in dispute based on Nigeria's history. Uh, so it was, it was fairly stressful. Then, they, of course, they tried to veer off to ask me about uh, the snipers list. And I told them that, uh, you know, that's outside our conversation. Uh, in any case, even if I have any information about that, I will not give it to them because they are on the side of those who suspect the snipers. So the, the whole discussion took about two hours. So by one thirty, two o'clock, we are done. And uh, then, of course, the rest is psychological uh, war of uh, they They will just leave you and ignore you. Uh, for hours, but the, the interrogation itself, the discussions on what uh, I was invited or arrested for took just two hours. By two o'clock, we are done. Mm. Now, did the, any any time during the interrogation, did the name of Asari Dakubo come up in in any of the uh, statements that came from you or from them? No. N no, you, uh, did, you didn't tell them about what Asari Dakubo has been saying. No. Well, you know, you look, Asari Dokubo is a thug. I don't compare myself with thugs. And uh, so for me, uh, whatever he said, it, it was within his rights to say it. It's, it's a country uh, where people should be allowed to 
uh, say what they believe, what they what, what they want to say, as long as it doesn't infringe on the law. Mm. So I didn't make reference to that because I don't want to ever think of myself as someone comparable to Antari Dokubo, mm. fr- quite frankly. Mm. Uh, I, I've never taken arms against the state. I've never stolen crude oil. I've never been called a militant. I'm a normal human being like every Nigerian that uh, is uh, low abiding. I'm not uh, Atari Dokubo. So I didn't even mention him. Now, how, how professional were the SSS men and women? Do you um, do you consider the uh, the way you were treated in, uh, professionally um, proper? Yeah, well, they were quite professional in my interactions with them in their office. Of course, uh, when they invaded my house and so on, they were behaving like uh, organized thugs. But in their offices, they are quite professional, and everything they did was. Uh, 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 sensible and reasonable, and we had uh, good discussions. Mm. The, the media reported that you were granted a bell. Uh, what kind of bell is that? Were there conditions to that bell? There were no conditions, as far as I know. Mm. Oh, okay. So, but now, if if you're in a position to to um, to reform or the the SSS, uh, what what will you think will be the changes that are needed in the way they operate? I, I, I don't know. I'm not an expert in the area of security and intelligence, so I have little to add, except to say that for me, the SSS is supposed to be largely an intelligence gathering institution. And uh, it should pass nothing. Uh, so the way a manner the SSS has evolved in the last in gun wielding uh, officials, it's just, it's just one, I think it should be. More effective when you do. Why do you think that wouldn't amount to anything? Because I do not think that there is anything that the conference can achieve that the National Assembly uh, under a decent government cannot achieve. We are all concerned about many aspects of the Nigerian constitution. It is not a perfect document, but I believe that the Niger- Nigeria can be run uh, with this constitution and it can be amended in areas where there are defects, and that can be done through the National Assembly. It has been done before. I don't believe that we need to spend 7 billion naira to uh, collect people with very little legitimacy uh, to discuss how to frame a new constitution. I think it's a non-event and a complete waste of time and resources. Mm. Now, the government side, they are saying that uh, the National Assembly, they've been trying to amend the constitution for a long time, that they've not been able to and that there are some issues that are beyond the National Assembly, the ability to, to discuss and handle. So you don't think it's a legitimate reason behind this national conference? No, no, no. There is nothing beyond the National Assembly. The National Assembly is the legislature for the Federation, and uh, they can legislate on virtually everything that is particularly amended in the Constitution. I don't believe that. Mm. The truth of the matter is the whole motive behind the conference is to divert attention from the failures of the sitting government and the confusion within the PGP and efforts to divide the country further for political gain. Mm. Uh, this is why our our party is opposed to it and will not participate in the conference. Mm. Now, talking about your party and, and the kind of uh, relationship now going on uh, both in the National Assembly and the wider political sphere of Nigeria, you have people moving from PDP and coming to APC and, and that, that kind of thing. What is going on? How, how will the APC return, if, it, if, if I could say that, its core um, idea with all these people coming from all these parties? How is that uh, marriage going? I think it's going very well. You know, the, 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 a few people coming into a large organization consisting of three old political parties cannot change that uh, political party into their image. You know, we, those of us that are the founders of the APC have our core values, and whoever comes to our party would have to adjust to, to those minimum core values. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think that, uh, you know, the, 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 the way a manner people are getting worried that we have five governors coming in to join 11, and those five will somehow... Uh, change the existing 11. I think it's not looking at the numbers and not being realistic. The truth of the matter is that politics is a game of inclusion. You don't exclude people, but you have to have minimum core values 
upon which everyone would join. And that's what we've been trying to uh, preserve and protect in our, in our party, the APC. Now, INEC just announced the timetable for the 2015 elections, and we now know the date. Uh, APC, uh, are they comfortable with the timetable, and when are we going to know who will be the presidential uh, candidate for APC? Well, we have issues with that timetable, uh, but I don't want to say anything until the Interim National Executive Committee of the party meets. Uh, we hope to do so in the next couple of weeks after our membership registration is concluded. We start membership registration nationwide on Wednesday, the 5th of February. After that, the National Executive Committee will meet to review the timetable proposed by INEC, which, uh, by the way, was uh, proposed unilaterally by INEC without consulting the political parties, contrary to all the promises that Chairman Jiga had made in the past. So we'll look at that timetable and we'll come out with a position. For, uh, for, for the time being, I can only say we have issues with it, but we'll come out in detail with our issues and our suggestions to make it better. Mm. Now, I, I know you just said uh, in our second part that uh, the SS has asked you about this sniper list. Um, mm. Many Nigerians are still asking that question. Do you have the list and um, can you reveal more of the people that are on the list? I, I have seen the list, or what is supposed to be the list. I don't have the list, but it exists. And mm. those that are asking the questions know that it exists. That's why I didn't think there was any need to respond to them. Mm. I understand that there is an investigation panel looking into that. I will wait and see what, what is the outcome of that investigation. But knowing the genocide, especially, you know, every investigation committee report goes into the drawer and never comes out. Mm. So we'll wait and see. Now, uh, we are running out of time. Let me ask you, on social media, you are very, very popular. You have a lot of young people following you. Uh, I, I want to ask you, how is that going? Uh, is that a way um, the new political, uh, po the politics of tomorrow is going to be played by actors like you? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, social media is very important, very powerful, which is the future. Um, and any politician of any standing that is not on social media uh, has put himself in a detrimental position. So I will recommend, and I, and I do recommend to all my colleagues in politics to get on social media because uh, a large percentage of our population, over 70 percent, is aged between uh, uh, less than uh, 35, 40 years of age. So we need to engage with that demography, and the best way to engage with them is through social media. Uh, I, I am not sure that social media today has immediate impact on votes and political activity, but I think it is going to get bigger going forward in the future, uh, and uh, it is certainly uh, an area of influence, it is certainly an area of communication, and I have learned a lot being on social media, I've learned a lot about how our young people think, what worry, what bothers them, what they are complaining about, uh, and what sort of questions I'll be asked if I'm ever in the public space. Uh, I have learned that from social media. So it's something, a platform that I recommend to everyone, but particularly to those that are involved in the management of public affairs. And I don't mean that you get a Twitter handle or a Facebook page and you get some Reno or Mockery to be running it for you. You get on there and do it yourself and interact directly with the people, uh, with the young people, as some of us have been doing. I think it's a great uh, platform, and I think it's going to get bigger going forward. Now, l let me ask you along that line. Uh, have you posted something that you regretted posting, and how did that play out? Yes. Um, there, there was a tweet by Ogunye Mibukola, uh, uh, one of my young followers, Zibok. Uh, there was a tweet about Jesus Christ, which I retweeted, and it, it, it caused all kinds of uproar. Uh, so most of it mischief because some people tried to attribute it to me uh, when it actually came from a young man who was uh, who is a Christian, uh, and uh, those that uh, uh, engage in bigotry tried to twist it to make it appear as if a Muslim is being disrespectful to Christianity. Uh, that I regret, and uh, I posted uh, an apology to those that felt offended. Uh, but on the whole, you know, I think social media has been a very powerful and positive force for change in our country, and it will continue to be bigger uh, going forward in the future. Yeah, let, let me ask you. So is retweeting not um, 
uh, is, is it not endorsement? That that's one of the no, questions. No, it, no, it is not. Uh, many of us put in our Twitter handles that our tweeting is not endorsement. But more than that, you, look, you tweet something or you retweet it not because you believe or agree with the views, but because you want other people to see the other side of any story. Because uh, you know, uh, there is a saying that every story has has at least two sides or three: the the, 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 the my side, your side, and the truth. So you know, most of us put this out, uh, pu pu you know, post these things out there to provoke uh, thought and discussion, not because we agree or disagree with it. You not know, everything that I put on my Facebook page or Twitter handle that I agree with or believe even, but I, I think it is of interest. It is of some enlightenment to young people to read and reflect about. So you know, if you retweeting or posting something on one page, does not mean an endorsement of that view at all. Mm. All right, Malam El Rufai, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rodolfo. It's a pleasure. Okay. When we come back, we are going to have a Skype call where we ask you the question about the national conference. Do you think that the delegates to be appointed and nominated, uh, that they will speak for you, that they will represent you? And do you think that 7 billion naira that the government is going to spend in this conference is worth it. So stay, stay with us and we'll be right back. <laughs>